All right, you can heal family. We are back again for another day. Uh, today is Saturday, so the the morning flow is a little different. My children are home, and I am in the living room reading. So if you hear a little noise in the background, it's them. But you know they got to get this good word too. So this is a great opportunity for me to read this Bible, and my kids to hear hear what God has to say as well so you know we're all in this together family yes we are so we're reading in the gospel of John and we're going to start with chapter 19 out of the open bible the new living translation and I had a good morning I did I walked for a long time I might have done uh, maybe four miles this morning and I spent some time editing the um, video 19 for the challenge and I made myself Oh, God, you guys, I'm stuck on this Dunkin' Donut roasted tomato avocado toast with this, with the, what is that, the, the bagel seasoning. Oh, so, you know, now that the debt demolisher is getting me straight, check out our YouTube channel. Financially, I was going through that drive through you know, $4.31 a pop. So I went out and I grabbed all the ingredients. So I've been making it at home. So now... You know, for the amount I spent, you know, I think I bought it like three times, so 12 something dollars. I spent $12 at the store on ingredients, so now I can just keep eating it. You know, I can eat like 12 of these things. So I don't know, you guys do the math, but the point is, I'm more aware of where my money is going, and that's really important for those of us healing because a lot of times we have spent our money and given it away to people uh, who were not deserving of it, right? So there you have it. Well, with that all being said, let's get started on, oh, my name is Sheena Major. Why do I keep doing that? If this is your first time, thank you. My name is Sheena, and I help uh, people heal from unhealthy relationships and learn to love themselves. So when I do these readings, I'll say a little bit in the beginning, and I started off saying, you know, reflecting on what I read at the end, but now it seems that as the Spirit moves me, as I hear something that I'm reading, I'm sharing it with you, you know, that's why it's read with me, okay? So let's get reading together. John chapter 19. Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with the lead-tipped whip. The soldiers made a crown of long, sharp thorns and put it on his head, and they put a royal purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews, they mocked, and they hit him with their fist. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I am going to bring him out to you now, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. Then Jesus, then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the leading priests and temple guards began shouting, Crucify! Crucify! You crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, By our laws, he ought to die because he called himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever. He took Jesus back into the headquarters again and asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. You won't talk to me, Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or to crucify you? Then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who brought me to you has the greater sin. Now that's a good word right there because he's saying, You know, Pilate, you have no power over me unless God gives it to you. And, and think about that in our lives. Anything that's happened to you, God allows it. Remember the lion who was roaring around seeking whom he, whom he could devour? You know, God had to, to say, you know, you can have uh, my servant Job. You know, he had, Satan had to get permission to mess with Job. So just know all things work together for good in your life. And, and let me say, things are working together for good in there because that noise you're hearing is my daughter cleaning out the fish the little fish tank. We have a little beta fish my daughter got a couple years ago named Fenley Jack. So he's getting a fresh tank this morning. All right, let's continue. Verse 12. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leaders told him, if you release this man, you are not a friend of Caesar. 
anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. Then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat on the platform that is called the stone pavement in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was now about noon of the day of preparation for the Passover, and Pilate said to the people, Here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him. Crucify him. What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the leading priest shouted back. Then Pilate gave Jesus to them to be crucified. The Crucifixion of Christ So they took Jesus and led him away. Carrying the cross by himself, Jesus went to the place called Skull Hill, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him. There were two others crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign over him that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest said to Pilate, Change it from the King of the Jews to he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate replied, What I have written, I have written. It stays exactly as it is. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said, Let's not tear it, but throw dice to see who gets it. This fulfilled the scriptures that says, They divided my clothes among themselves and threw dice for my robe, so that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Woman, he is your son. And he said to the disciple, She is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that everything was now finished, and to fulfill the scriptures, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on the hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Jewish leaders didn't want the victims hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath at that because it was the Passover. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. It is presented so that you also can believe. These things happen in fulfillment of the scriptures that say, Not one of his bones will be broken, and they will look on him whom they pierce. The Burial of Christ Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jews' leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take Jesus' body down. When Pilate gave him permission, he came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night, also came, bringing about 75 pounds of embalming ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Together they wrapped Jesus' body in a long linen cloth with spices, as is the Jewish custom of burial. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation before the Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they led Jesus there. Okay, I was thinking about changing my location but I'm just going to keep going with it um, reading because the distractions are real you guys the distractions are real here all right um, chapter John oh my gosh chapter 20 the resurrection of Christ early Sunday morning while it was still dark Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. 
She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and I don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb to see. The other disciple outran Peter and got there first. He stopped and looked in and saw the linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying to the side. Then the other disciple also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they hadn't realized that the scripture said he would rise from the dead. Then they went home. Christ appears to Mary Magdalene. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she stopped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels sitting at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Why are you crying? the angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She glanced over her shoulder and saw someone standing behind her. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned toward him and exclaimed, Teacher, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Now before I go on to the next section, when I read that verse, um, when Mary said she doesn't know where they lay his body, I, honestly, you guys, it reminded me of my dad because when he passed away, you know, I wasn't involved in any of the... Um, what is it, the procedures, I suppose. And I, I don't know what my stepmother did with my dad's body. And that used to bother me, but now I just know that he is tucked away with Jesus. And then I will see him again in heavenly places. And I just take comfort in knowing that. And um, if it's God's will um, and his timing, it will be revealed to me, you know, where he was buried on earth. But, but for now, I just read that, and Mary didn't know where Jesus was either, but Jesus showed up. And, and just like that, God will show up for you too when, there's, when there are things that are bothering you, that are hurting you, and you don't know the answer, you don't know why, you don't know where, you don't know what. Just know that Jesus, um, you know, Jesus is with you. So let's move on. Christ appears to the disciples, Thomas absent. That evening, on the first day of the week, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he held out his hands for them to see, and he showed them his side. They were filled with joy when they saw their Lord. He spoke to them again and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you refuse to forgive them, they are unforgiven. One of the disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, We have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Christ appears to the disciples, Thomas present. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. He said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. 
Now that is good. That is a good word because faith, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the things you cannot see. So we got to walk this thing out. We've got to walk this Christian walk out, you know, believing in things we can't see, hoping, you know, that blessed hope that lies within, that God is at work, that God is always at work. All right, let me get a little water. All right, John chapter 21. No, hold on. The purpose of John's gospel. Jesus, Jesus' disciples saw him do many other miracles, signs, besides the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life. John chapter 21. Christ appears to the seven disciples. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon, Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, the disciples saw Jesus standing on the beach, but they couldn't see who he was. He called out, friends, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right hand side of the boat and you'll get plenty of fish. So they did and they couldn't draw in the net because there were so many fish in it. <laughs> okay, you guys, now I am getting to laughing again because like I've said, if you don't follow Tony Gaskins, follow him, um, health and relationship coach and everything else in between to business and entrepreneurship but when I heard this plenty of fish he always talks about no online dating okay <laughs> so I don't know as I read I things just come through my mind and you know let's be fishers of men you know let's not let's not be trying to catch men you know that could be Ted Bundy okay so let's let's just fish for men so Jesus told him to cast cast their net on the other side and there was plenty so let's just follow Jesus's instructions okay so yeah that's those are my thoughts chapter verse 7 then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter it is the Lord when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord he put on his tunic for he had stripped for work jumped into the water and swam ashore the others stayed with the boat and pulled the loaded net to the shore, for they were only out about 300 feet. When they got there, they saw that a charcoal fire was burning and fish were frying over it, and there was bread. Bring some of the fish you just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went abroad and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast. Jesus said, and no one dared ask if he really was the Lord, because they were sure of it. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Christ speaks to Peter. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Once more he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was so grieved that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything, you know I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. The truth is, when you were young, you were able to do as you liked and go wherever you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hand and others will direct you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know what kind of death he would die to glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Peter turned around and saw the disciples Jesus loved following them. The one who had leaned over to Jesus during supper and asked, 
Lord, who among us will betray you? Peter asked Jesus, What about him, Lord? Jesus replied, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You follow me. So the rumor spread among the community of believers that the disciple wouldn't die. But that isn't what Jesus said at all. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? The Conclusion of John's Gospel This is that disciple who saw these events and recorded them here. And we all know that that his account of these things is accurate. And I suppose that if all the other things Jesus did were written down, the whole world could not contain the book. All right, you can heal family. That concludes the Gospel of John. So we have read all four Gospels together. We did it. Yes, this is good. This is good. I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of myself. And I'm thankful that we endured till the end. And I find it very fitting that this last reading of the Gospels and of the and the book of John that I'm downstairs in my living room and my kids are down here in the kitchen cleaning this this little fish aquarium and it just as I was reading it just reminded me there's so many distractions in the world that pull us away from the Bible and from sitting down and reading it and as I was reading I thought of actually getting up and moving to another area of my house But I just said, you know, let me just use this as a training ground, as discipline, because there's a lot of other things we want to accomplish in life, right? And distractions will come in and try to pull us away from what we've set our eyes to do. We set our eyes like flint for to reach a goal by taking action steps. And the distractions will come in and try to get us get us off track, you know? All these detours will come up and try to stop us from proceeding, but we must push on. We must carry on. So that's what we're going to do here as far as these readings go. We're going to keep reading. So tomorrow we're going to start the book of Acts. And as always, I'll read the introduction and then probably uh, the first chapter. Sometimes those introductions are pretty long. So we'll, we'll do that and we'll move into this New Testament and see what Acts has in store for us. All right, so I'm thankful for you and uh, proud of you for getting through the Gospels with me. All right, what do I say? True healing begins with self-love because God is love and he lives on the inside of you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.